everyone welcome back to the channel it's my final day with the defender so i wanted to do a little bit of a review slash just my casual thoughts on having this for two weeks and 1200 miles i feel like i've been in a lucky position to be able to test it for such an extended period of time before actually taking the plunge on it. And we'll begin with the fact that I look like I've been on a jog in southern Spain and I've got the window open and the heating is on ice cold in January. And that's because the heating system, it, it must be from the early 1980s or so. Either it's scorchingly hot on your feet or scorchingly hot on your face. Uh, and there are sometimes a few tiny whispers of ice cold air that just flutter around the big interior of this Defender. I find the only way to get around this is to have two minutes of scorching hot air on my face and then two minutes of scorching hot air on my feet. And once it gets unbearable on my face, I then move it down to my feet. And once it's unbearable on my feet, I move it to my face. I've had a lot of people saying Defenders are not comfortable for long distances, but adding to that, there are two completely different schools of thoughts. One is that the Defender is the most brilliant, rugged and tough vehicle ever made and the other school of thought is it's a useless, antiquated vehicle that does nothing well at all and it breaks down just if you look at it. I'll hit the first point on that. Long distances, I know it's all relevant, or all relative, sorry, but compared to my Fiat 500, this is perfectly nice doing long distances on. I've done two 400 mile days and each one has been a total joy. Once you get off the motorway though, and you get to the tight winding lanes, such as in Cornwall, the turning circle is, is without question the worst I've ever seen in my life. Maneuvers that should be perfectly easy are, are seriously stressing inducing. I parked up the Defender on a Cornish lane and I needed, well I almost always do need Monica to get out, guide me in and I think one of the times it was a 15 point turn and took 12 minutes just to park this. I should note I've got significantly better now but manoeuvres, parking in car parks, things like that, with its gigantic length, it is something that's genuinely taken me three or four solid days driving to actually get used to. And then you've got the, well, I say soundproofing, but to be fair, this is a canvas roof. There really is no soundproofing though, whether you have a canvas roof or not. So much so that Monarch and I both decided there's just no point at all having the, the radio on because we ended up having the radio on so loud that the dreadful quality of speakers just sounded unbearably tinny so we decided after about two hours there's no point using the radio at all in fact even for casual conversations monica and i were having to scream in each other's ears just to have a fairly normal conversation until we both decided there's really not much point having a casual conversation either so we drive in complete silence near enough the handling in general though, it's perfectly decent. In fact, I was, I was pleasantly surprised with it. There's nothing wrong with the handling at all. For long distances or going around town, it's comfortable enough. The steering wheel is comically gigantic, but actually I love it. It works perfectly well. The brakes are okay, although I've had some weird areas of skidding, which I've never experienced before in the little Fiat 500. Top speed on this, you're looking at, in reality, 75 miles an hour. Sometimes it does fancy doing 80 miles an hour, but that depends on the day you get it. It's meant to be an extremely good towing machine, and I have no doubt at all, because this is meant to be the vehicle that can get you anywhere and tow anything out of a bad situation. But my little Fiat 500 will happily tow a 300 kilo trailer up an incline, whereas the Defender often struggles to get itself up to 80 miles an hour with no incline at all. The engine, it's, well, it's not a characterful engine and that's because in essence it's a Ford Transit unit but it does its job perfectly well. It's nippy enough if you keep it in lower gears for going around town. I found, and this has surprised me, pleasantly surprised me, in my consideration for possibly buying this vehicle, 
I've daily driven it now for two weeks and I honestly believe this can be a daily driver vehicle. If I bought it, I'd use it as a daily driver. It's perfectly decent. Yes, it's fairly hellish parking and yes, three point turns are actually 15 point turns. But once you get used to those little quirks, I don't see any reason at all why you couldn't use this as your daily driver and plenty of people do. One issue that may sway your decision with that though is the economy, the miles per gallon. And because not everyone works in miles per gallon, I will give a monetary comparison. My little Fiat 500 cost you 50 pounds, top to bottom of the tank to get you 365 miles. Whereas the exact same amount of miles, 365 miles in the Defender, will cost you £106. If you want refinement, you'll look elsewhere. But every single journey in this, whether it's going to the supermarket or just going to pick up a coffee, I find myself standing next to the front door with the keys in my hand, impatiently waiting for Monica to come downstairs because I'm just speechless with excitement at the thought of just driving it. It's raw, it's uncompromising, it's gigantic, you feel like you're driving a tank. It's, it's just, I've loved every second of it, I really have. It's hard to put into words how much I've loved it, but I had the highest hopes for this vehicle when I picked it up because it's been my dream vehicle for so long. It's. It's almost ridiculous how high my hopes were for this and it has surpassed those hopes purely in the way it makes me feel. Is a Defender a ridiculous purchase that's going to end up bankrupting me or is it actually an incredibly sensible purchase because let's say for sake of argument I go out and I buy a Defender, £30,000 for a 2010 model, let's say for example. In two or three years, there's a very good chance that could be worth thirty-eight to £40,000. There's a really good chance it could have gone up another 25, 20% or so. Whereas if you go out and you buy a brand new sensible car, it will be losing thousands of pounds, very possibly tens of thousands of pounds. So it makes sense, you're far more inclined to spend money on repairs or general servicing and maintenance on a vehicle if you know it's going to hold on to its value rather than something that you think, oh well, it's, it's worthless, is there any point at all? And that's the argument I'm having in my mind now. Do I just take the plunge? Because it is actually one of the very few 4x4s that can be used as a daily driver that's an appreciating asset. So after driving a fairly standard, at least engine size and gearbox, Land Rover Defender 110 and giving my thoughts on that vehicle after two weeks and 1200 miles, honestly I didn't know about this, Revolve and Neen Overland have just set me up with two of their Revolve modified Land Rover Defenders here so I can see what the difference is like from a fairly standard Defender to one of the ultimate Defenders that you really will ever see. So I'm going to flip the camera because both of these two Defenders here with the bonnets up, doors open, are just about the show pieces from Revolve. And here they both are, two of the ultimate Defenders you'll ever see. Both of them fitted with a 5.3 litre V8 engine. 
look how, how beautifully well fitted that is into the engine bay. This black one here, you can see the revolve sign on the front. The black one here is a six speed manual and the silver one, a customer's car, is an eight speed auto. Both of them have 355 horsepower and both of them, in fact, definitely the black one, I think the silver one as well, have a very special suspension setup and this is fairly new for Neen. It's a semi-active suspension. I think they call it tractive and you can turn it on here. I'll show you when I turn this on but it means that you can completely change all of the suspension setup just from here on the touch screen. V8 power in your Defender. They can actually go all the way up to 700 horsepower, 5.3 to 6.2, and Neen Overland, and specifically these, because they are the Revolve modified ones. Whatever you want, pretty much, I don't think they're going to say no. So they can pretty much do whatever you desire to your Defender. There's one thing that surprised me, first of all. Have a listen to this door click. That's not a tinny crack. That is a confident thud. And that's because this has proper soundproofing. Proper soundproofing throughout. And that makes a huge difference. You can see everything is done to this Defender. It looks like a completely different machine. Starting off with the beautiful seats plush leather seats with a foot rail to get in. Let's jump in here. Much, much smaller steering wheel. Roughly the same dials, just with a slightly nicer finish, finish around the edge. You've got the in entertainment system in the middle. You've still got the manual gearbox here, still got the handbrake here, where, which I'm used to. And even this, the center console has been finished in beautiful, beautiful leather. Way more padding on that now. Leather trims here as well. Even the grab rail has the leather trim. And then you can see a nicely insulated roof as well that will help with all of the sound deadening. I'll come out. Oh, before I get to the back actually, Look at the size of those wheels. They are 21 inch wheels. Another thing you'll notice is it's got a panoramic side window. So this is all here, glass, all the way along. Looks incredibly stealth. Let's see, I haven't actually opened one of these before myself. Here we go. Love the side opening of that. Again, this has been finished in a different color and have a look at this interior. So everything is just beautifully upholstered. You've got a perfectly fitted floor here, hard wearing floor, carpet on the sides, and then these revolve leather seats that will all fold up. So this means that it's a 246 seater Defender, even though it's just a Defender 90. And I really like this setup with two seats facing each other and you can see how much space or how much light comes in through the side window. And you've also got the top window bit there as well. So it's incredibly light. And also have a look at how, how clear it is looking out and how blacked out it is on the side. Okay, that is that one. You can see there R53 standing for 5.3 liters. Just everything's finished to the highest level. I should show you here as well. Here is the trick suspension. Oh, it's all, it's just dream level vehicle. And now I'm going to come around to the next one. Again, 5.3 litre V8. You can see slightly smaller tyres on these compared to the gigantic ones on these. I would slightly side with the smaller wheels on the Defender actually. So if I were building my dream one, it would be one of these. You can see the 5.3 litre V8 engine in this and 
the customers requested side exhausts for this one. So anything's possible. The side exhaust coming out just in front of the rear tire there. Revolve have put their own seats in here, but this instead of leather, you can see this is suede and you've got the automatic gearbox in the middle there with two cup holders. This all looks very, very different. The entertainment system in the middle and then at the back, you've got these stunningly upholstered seats, very, very chunky seats with a four seat set up in this. And you've got the most luxurious headlining in here as well. This really does feel like a high, high quality premium vehicle now. Even I've just noticed the sun visors, they're also finished in this beautiful material. And the doors, a solid thump as well. I'll see if this is open. It is. And that's what, that's what a four seater setup looks like with the heavy wearing rubber mat. And even here I've just noticed all leather trimmed leather trimmed up to the edges here and then you've got the almost suede style I don't know this material but beautiful material roof that meets the leather just at the top of the window section and this is what the normal windows look like you can just see the metal bit coming down here so they don't or they haven't gone for the panoramic windows with this one again leather line there Incredible. Well, it's incredible to see what customers are specking their defenders with to bring them up to 2023 and how they're using them to, to create them into modern feeling vehicles. That, especially that silver one with the headlining as well, it feels like a, a completely, really a completely modern vehicle. And this black one, you know, the fact that you still get that manual box in the middle, but mated to a 5.3 litre V8 with the stunning luxurious leather seats. It's, it's fantastic. It's also really interesting to see that as the defenders get more valuable, the emphasis a lot of the time will go to them being comfortable, usable, more on the streets than, or on the roads than an off-roading proposition. You can definitely see that with these two vehicles because they're going to have the power, the refinement, the comfort to do long journeys on. And with that said, I'm going to see if I can just borrow the keys to this black one and see if I can just drive it down the road to see how much of a difference all those modifications, the different engine has made to a Defender. Does it turn it into a completely different animal? Okay, first one, the black one. 5.3 V8, six speed manual. Ooh. Okay, first of all, the door closes with a confident thud. Secondly, the gearbox feels completely different because it is much more modern, much more confident, way less movement, ooh, ooh, way less movement um, to change gear. And suddenly, when I put my foot on the accelerator, instead of nothing happening for the first second and a half, I bolt off on this. Okay, okay. This immediately feels very, very different. So, way quieter. Initial rumble when you start it up, but because it's a petrol, it's much quieter. Ah, whoa! So, excuse me. Wow. It feels modern, it feels tight, it, the suspension, it feels like a modern car. I'm on a run here. Oh, oh my God. Hey, okay. Wow. Genuinely quick, it's, genuinely quick it is seriously rapid it feels 
it feels modern. But you get all of that still, you know, the, the look of the Defender. I'm looking out over that gig really muscular bonnet. Everywhere I'm looking, it looks like a Defender, but just differences everywhere that don't take away, that don't take away from that Defenderishness. They just give it a fresh lease of life and they bring it up to 2023. I mean, there's no question at all after having driven this for about 30 seconds, this is as comfortable as any 4x4, as any vehicle that you would ever, ever wish could be. It's, I don't know, is sublime too far to say it's sublime the way it handles? It's unbelievable what the suspension has done to the handling and to the feel of it. It feels, it feels like Land Rover could go and sell this Defender. Bring it back. Bring the Defender back, just like this. It's stunning. Just the, the feel, I have feel from the bends. I, I can take this bend and there's no roll at all. And I'm coming up to roundabout into second gear. I'm going to keep it in second here, coming round the roundabout. Again, just almost no body roll at all, but it irons out the bumps with ease. It's a very, very understated sound from the exhaust, which is exactly what I like. It's not going to deafen you at all. In fact, the soundproofing in here, it's extremely quiet. It feels very, very civilized. If I had the money, uh, this would be my daily driver. God, 5.3 V, V8. It's unbelievable what you can do to these to bring them right up to the modern day. Stunning. I don't know the price. And my dad always says, need to ask the price of something then you can't afford it so maybe I'll have to save a bit more but if you've got the money and you love Defenders and you want to bring it up bang up to date to be a usable proposition with complete luxury then then this is it for you this is what you need Two bits I wanted to show you before I head back to Neen in the distance there. So, in fact, three bits. You've got this beautiful revolved steering wheel with the logo in the middle. Then, this is where the electronic suspension trickery happens. Very stealth looking touchscreen here, and you can change everything from front, roll, pitch, and rear, and every element within each of those. Um, each of those options. You can also save all of your your specific choices here on the right hand side. So for example, right now, all of these settings are saved as M4, but I can change all of these settings for off-roading and then save it, for example, as M3. Another bit to mention, this infotainment section in the middle, when I re engage reverse gear, that is then a reverse parking camera. And I've shown you enough of the inside. So I'm going to head back over to Neen now. And I think, I think they're going to let me try out the eight speed automatic box. Okay, because I'm a child, just before heading back to Neen, I will try and go in first gear and accelerate hard just to see what it's like. Now I feel comfortable or confident in it. 
way. That won't get boring. Okay. God, I've got my adrenaline going. Um, I'm going to now go in the the eight speed just to see what the eight speed is like. I've been told I must try that now compared to this. Second one, Silver Defender, 5.3 litre V8, eight speed auto. That's the only real difference, as far as I can tell, from the, the overall driving experience. Ooh, oh, it's louder. It's definitely more aggressive with that side exit exhaust. And of course, my left foot will do nothing into first gear. Okay, Oi. Ooh, okay. Okay, oh, it's, oh, that's, it's Lamborghini. That sound is stunning. Vicious growl coming around the bend. Oh. Wow. That is like a Lamborghini. That is absolutely insane. But again, you slow down, completely civilized. But wow, that eight speed box means that you can pick up speed. <sighs> May sound pathetic, but while having both hands on the steering wheel, because whew, it's, it's, a, it's a, well, I say untamed beast. It's a very tamed beast, but guys, still, that's scary. That feels like it's, okay, so 20 miles an hour. 30, 40, 50, 60. I mean, I could go on and on, but that will be quite dangerous. And that completely transforms the feeling. The feeling of the Defender having the eight speed box on. I'll just put it into park. Handbrake up. It transforms the the feeling of it. It it takes what I've just driven the black one and gives it another level of of ease of use and refinement as well. But the rasp from that side exit exhaust is is brutal. <sighs> dream dream level machine. But have I said it already? My mind's a bit of a blur. I know where my money would go if I had the money to buy one of these. Right, I'll flip the camera and show you exactly now what I see, because this is very different. So steering wheel the same as in the black one, but the differences are here. Instead of having the adaptive suspension, you've got the basic controls here, the fog lamps and the, the washer jets, things like that. You've got the same infotainment system here, but you've now got the automatic gearbox here with accelerator right here that you may be able to hear, and then break. Nothing here, it's a huge amount of work required. So that's where the box is, that's where I change from, of course, reverse, neutral, etc., etc. And this is where you can see it. So you can see 
changing to reverse, neutral and one which is drive and I'll put it all the way back to park. So very, very different feeling and I would just say before I get out of this, just leather upholstered everywhere, the seats and the side as well. Okay, let's go and give this Defender back. I can't believe it, one day and three Defenders I've driven and up until two weeks ago I'd never driven a Defender. You know, driving these modern, updated, reimagined Land Rover Defenders, it's eye-opening from two points of view. One, the power that you can get out of them, and they feel sturdy. They feel like they can take that power. That's the surprising thing. You can use that power. You can redline it. You know, you can make the most of that incredible 5.3 liter V8 engine. But on top of that, this isn't just a basic raw Defender that's had a huge engine put into it. This is a completely reimagined. It's civilized, it's quiet, it's refined, it can be used every day. The whole thing has been rethought out to make it the ultimate Defender. It, it can be used in so many different situations. If my pockets were deep enough, it would be a daily driver, it would be a continent crusher, it would tow a boat if I'm rich enough to own a boat. It's the ultimate utility vehicle, yet it's it's just got so much adrenaline fueled fun, but then it will settle back down into a very sedate town driver. I'm blown away, really blown away by these. They're incredible. Right, I'll wrap it up there. I've just been given the keys back to my little Fiat. I kind of missed it in a way. It's going to feel very, very strange getting into that and driving it after having the Defender for so long. But before I go, I'm in the backyard of Neen. They've got some just mind-blowing projects going on at the moment. But just let me give you a taste of what's in the backyard. You've got a Defender, some colossal world-tripping excursion vehicle. A vehicle that's so old I've never seen it before, a Jeep Cherokee. Cherokee, Jeep Cherokee, a Discovery, a Land Cruiser, Wrangler, one of those funny Toyotas, funny Toyotas that I don't think were ever sold in the UK, but I do like those. And then round the other side, you've got an old Army Defender, one more Defender, and of course, an extremely special little Fiat 500. Right, thanks so much, everyone. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all in.